Okay, so let's deal with some drum tracks, some drum lines on your score. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this good guide for drum notation. Um, this is just on my um, daughter score site or page on my blog. Um, now this is great and I often use this drum key um, to know what what note head and what line different sounds need to go on. And this is a pretty elaborate one. Um, but the main things I'm going to use are closed tie hat um, and I believe rim shot as well. Big fan of a rim shot. Um, but let's just go have a look at the score. So, oh, my actual score is here. So, just here, this drum track here, it just, it looks a bit messy. I don't love all the rests. Um, and we've got some confusing looking note heads. We've got lots of cross note heads. We've got lots of double note heads there. Um, so, um, just to give you an idea of what it's meant to sound like, in GarageBand, when I was composing this, um, this beat, sounds like this. I've actually just realized today that this note here isn't actually doing anything. So really, we're dealing with three different sounds. So we've got the closed tie hat, we've got the rim shot, and we've got, um, yeah, just another another sound. I'm going to call it a, a tom because I'm going to do a rim shot on the snare. But a um, yeah, a rim shot on the snare, closed tie hat, and then just the regular um, hit on on a on a high tom. So let's look at what those will be. So if we go back to our drum key, we've got the closed tie hat, so a cross on the top line. We've got a rim, not necessarily shot. That says rim click, but it's going to be the third space is going to be your rim shot on the snare. And then the tom will be this one here, the top space. So we've got cross note head, top line, tom, top space, cross note head, um, third space for the snare rim shot. So if we go back here, these rhythms are correct, which is all thanks to our quantization, but it hasn't done these um, rests beautifully. So instead of this being an eighth note or a, or a quaver rest, um, we're going to turn it into a dotted quaver rest, which will take away this, which is just that bit easier to read. Now this is fine. Ba-ba. That's what we want. Da-da. So... Oh, we want this to be, now this is unfortunately quite annoying, we want this to go on the top line. So if you just keep pressing down, it'll give you lots of different options. There we go. So if we are, sometimes there's a bit of a discrepancy, so if we are following this, the closed tie hat on the top line should be correct. But, it sounds like in MuseScore it registers that as like an open symbol and if we go back to what we were doing that sounds like a closed hi-hat so let's just double check our other um, resource so common drum patterns let's do that oh yeah same website different situation so, yeah, they really are using the top line as the closed hi-hat. So, we're going to stick with that regardless of the fact that MuseScore's playback says differently. So, we're going to go and apply the crossed note head that's already there and put it on the top line. Now, if it's not a cross note head and you're struggling with that, um, you just press the note that you want, for example this one, um, and we want to go to note heads and then we want to click cross, and double click, 
and it will change the note head. Oh, hopefully. So that's our rim shot, our high tom, and the cross. And then we don't need two of these, so we get rid of it. Um, so let's just double check. So we've got da dum, da, and then the hi hat as well. So back to me score, but but it's also there. So. And that needs to go to the same place because we've got two of those close to our hot shots. There we go. And that is what your and that is what it will sound like. This is just me pressing up and down. But this sound combined with the I hat is what we want. So if we play that, this bar now looks a lot nice and a lot nicer. Press play. Ta -da, ta -da. That's good. So we're going to just apply that right here. And just keep going because it just keeps repeating. So you need to be aware of the structure of your piece and what keeps repeating and what doesn't. But even just cleaning that up, that makes it a lot more readable to someone, um, yeah, to, to your drummer. Now if we just move over here as well, um, this section here, drum track one, we move to back to my garage band. Let me show you what my drum track one is. So. So, we've got a clap kabasa situation. It's two sounds. And so I'm actually going to create a new line. Instead of using your regular five line notation for this, I'm just going to go to file, um, parts. Just kidding. We want to add an instrument, essentially. So file, I think score properties, no, edit instruments, there it is, so we go to um, yeah, all instruments. We want percussion unpitched and we want basically a two line percussion situation. So we want a cabasa. Let's even search that. Yep, I'm going to click add, I'm going to move that up to be just next to my drum set one so that we can just compare them to each other and we also want a clap, hand clap, there we go, same thing, moving it up, so you're going to have clap, cabasa and we're going to compare it to this drum set one and then eventually delete it. So now we've got this beautiful situation and we know that it's a hand clap and a cabasa. So this, this drum pattern um, where we've just created, oh, we have, we've just created our new lines. Um, I just made them repeat because I must have clicked undo too many times. So we've got 
Um, before I even transfer them into our cabasa and our hand claps, I'm going to clean up these rhythms a bit. You can see that this is a 16th note or a semiquaver and then a quaver. Because it's a drum or, or a percussion line, they're not going to um, sustain anyway, but it's just easier to read if we turn them into the longest note values we can, um, which is pretty conventional with drum notation music. So we're going to turn this into a dotted eighth note or into a dotted quaver. And look how simple that is to read now. Ba, 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 which is exactly what we want. So now I'm just going to copy that into both of these lines and then delete what we don't want. So we want clap, cabasa, cabasa. So delete that and delete these two. And then we've got just a clap. Yeah, clap, cabasa, and clap. And now this, I'm just going to turn this whole bar um, into both of them because I like the sound of that. So we get rid of that, we get rid of that. We're going to turn both of them into regular note heads. We'll just go over here in the palettes. We've got note head, double click just your normal. Let's turn into normal note heads. And now we've got a pretty nice looking score. There's no way to simplify that, except for maybe we can just turn this into a crotchet. That makes it nice and simple. So now if we go from here and we play it, oh, actually I'm going to copy paste a little bit. So this bar just keeps repeating over and over and over. I'm just going to keep putting it in. And then you can have a listen to how the the rhythm looks cleaner, but sounds exactly the same. So let's start here. Play. So we'll do that again after I've deleted this. So um, to delete it, we just press I and we go back to the score. And we delete the drum set one. So we've got kabasa, hand clap, drum set one. And I'm going to remove that. You can see... Now, with just our, our fixed up drum beat and our hand clap and cabasa, let's go from here. Press play. That's exactly what we want. So it's just one way to clean up a couple of the drum lines. Um, yeah, you can keep it simple. I had three different drum lines, which is you know, probably overkill, but um, yeah, you want to make it as clean and simple as you can um, because then the drummers will really appreciate it. So even though these notes don't hang on or sustain, they're easier to read and it still has the same sound. So that's drumming.